The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Welcome to Soybean School. I'm Bernard Tobin. Plant 21 is just getting underway and farmers will plant more acres of soybeans again this year. Um, It's a trend we watched for decades, uh, but how do more soybeans in the rotation and less diversity impact soybean yields and what are the implications for soil health? Um, We're going to tackle some of those questions today with uh, some help from my guest. He is Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada research scientist Craig Drury. Um, Hi, Craig. Hey, thanks for stopping by by and joining us on uh, Soybean School. My pleasure to be here. Craig, you've been studying crop rotations for, for 20 years down in Essex County in Ontario. Tell us about your trials. Give us a snapshot of, of what you've been up to and uh, what it looks like down there. Uh, 20 years ago, back in 2001, we established a crop rotation trial on a Brookston clay loam soil in Essex County. We want to evaluate the impact of crop rotations on long-term yields and soil organic carbon changes. There are 17 crop rotation treatments, which with each phase of the rotation planted every year. We evaluated continuous cropping of corn, soybeans, and winter wheat with two-year, three-year, and four-year rotations involving these three field crops. We also included red clover as a cover crop in the trial. So let's let's talk about what you've learned about soybeans in the rotations, Craig. Um, what happens to soybean yields when you have too many soybeans in the rotation, and what happens when you add diversity. So our continuous soybean yields are fairly low and the five-year yield average is only about 41 bushels per acre, which isn't very good. The soybean yields, however, increased by about 26 to 30 percent to 53 bushels per acre when soybeans were grown two out of three years in rotation but an even more dramatic increase. They increased up to um, a little over 50% to 64 bushels per acre when soybeans were grown in a three-year corn, soybean, winter wheat rotation. So it's not just soybeans that benefit from an improved crop rotation. Corn grain yields with a three-year crop rotation that included corn, soybeans, winter wheat, and red clover were also found to be about 40% greater than growing continuous corn. Yeah, Craig, some tremendous data here. And I'm, you know, the cumulative effect here. I mean, like, you know, when you go from continuous corn just to adding in, sorry, continuous soy is just adding in corn, you're looking at 200 bushels over that length of that period. And when you get into wheat, uh, 285, I mean, like, that's big value, big return. Indeed. Um, there's so many benefits of, of having a really good uh, crop rotation in, in terms of incru- improving uh, soil organic carbon levels and really resiliency um, in terms of being able to protect the crops in not only adverse weather conditions, uh, whether it be drought or excess rain, but also in good weather conditions as well. Craig, um you know, from a productivity perspective, you know, what's happening here? Is it a case of too many soybeans impacting soil health factors, you know, organic matter, soil respiration, nitrogen issues? How, how do we get from those low, um, you know, continuous yields all the way up to what we see when wheat's in the rotation? That's a great question. And to address this question, we measured some of the recommended soil health indicators back in 2018. Um, we found that soil organic carbon was under 2% with continuous soybeans in our soils, but it increased by uh, 16% or up to 2.25% in a corn soybean winter wheat rotation after 17 years. So in addition, you were mentioning about some of the uh, soil health indicators. We also saw more dramatic increases 
in potentially mineralizable nitrogen. As these values doubled with two-year soybean rotations, and in fact, they tripled with three-year soybean rotations over this time period. Crops such as winter wheat and corn can add a considerable amount of crop residue to the soil, which can then be converted to soil organic carbon by the soil microbes, which helps all crops grown in that rotation. Craig, what, what role does soil type play in this story? Uh, now, your, your trials, you mentioned, um, take place on some pretty tough Brookston clay. And, but we also, I also talked to D- David Hooker on the Soybean School, and he talks about the fact that at Ridgetown Campus, uh, uh, Unit of Guelph, uh, you know, he's, he's got some loamier soils, and he sees better yields in, uh, you know, the, the soybean wheat rotation, for example. Um, you know, again, what's the implications of soil type in this story? Sure. The Brookston clay loam soils certainly can be challenging, but the reality is the Brookston soil is also the dominant soil type in southwestern Ontario. So, you know, we have found huge benefits, including crops such as winter wheat in the crop rotation. Now, Dr. Hooker and Dr. Bill Dean, uh, both from University of Guelph, they've also found that wheat in a crop rotation can increase both corn and soybean yields. On average, they found that including winter wheat improved corn yields by about 18% and soybean yields by about 10 to 15%. So their yield increases aren't as dramatic as ours. Uh, The loamier soils tend to be a little bit more forgiving. Um, But they also, in addition to uh, the benefits of wheat, they also reported benefits including red clover in increasing uh, the agronomic efficiency of uh, end fertilizer addition to the soil. Uh, red clover is commonly seeded um, as a cover crop um, in the spring with winter wheat, and it's a legume that can fix nitrogen and provide nitrogen to the uh, subsequent uh, crops such as corn. So, Craig, final question. Um, what are the takeaways from your research for farmers? You know, soybeans, you know, a great crop, a profitable crop. But, what you know, what I see here is, you know, a lack of diversity can diminish yields and deplete soil. Soybeans can be very profitable, but we have found that greater yields are achievable when they are part of a diverse rotation. So crop diversity not only helps increase crop yields in good years, it also helps crops be more resilient in years impacted by poor weather conditions, such as droughts. And it does this primarily by increasing soil organic carbon and improving soil structure. It makes the soils more resilient. In addition, crop diversity also leads to improved microbial diversity in the soil And the microbes really drive many of the processes that rely upon to keep the crops and the soil healthy over the long term. Well, Craig, hey, some great insights, some great research. Hopefully we'll get down and maybe get a do a tour sometime this summer. We really appreciate you dropping by and spending some time with us on the Soybean School. Oh, very much my pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity to share some of my research results with you and your listeners.